hearing case, and this is REZ 2022-07, known as Hayden Park. It is uh, at Camelot Crossing in Valdale Road, and this involves 149 acres. It is currently R1. The request is for CG, PD, and R10. Mr. Dillard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, Commissioners. Again, this is a request that was heard two weeks ago at table. Uh, I'll restate just for the record here. The request is from R1 to Commercial General on approximately 63 acres, planned development on approximately 28 acres, and then R10 on approximately 55 acres. It is within the Urban Service Area and Community Activity Center character area. There are wetlands on the property as well. And this is the proposed overall site plan for the 149 acres. This is more detailed up close plan of the PD portion, which is binding by its site plan. It was noted at the request of the table to allow the opposition to present any concerns they have to the commissioners. During that time, staff reached out to GDOT as well with any concerns. GDOT did make the recommendation that a traffic impact analysis would be conducted for this site. Any questions for Mr. Dill? Yes, would, would that be, I guess, a condition that GI is asking? No, it's going to be a requirement that comes with it. Requirement that yeah. comes with it automatically? Yes. GDOT has already said that it would require a traffic study, correct? Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, we'll open up the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Fisher, 3532 River Chase Drive. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I come before you this afternoon on behalf of the residents of River Chase Drive, a subdivision which includes the roads of Chardon Way, Huntsburg, River Chase Drive, and Northridge. I would like to stress again that we are not anti-development. We are for a homeowner's or for smart development. We can all take a approach that we don't want development to occur in our backyard. But I need to put this development into perspective for just a moment. This developer, Mr. Hand, made a comment two weeks ago at this very podium that this proposed development was a half mile from us and that we probably wouldn't even see the four-story buildings. Well, let's examine that for a moment. The YMCA property is 782 feet deep on one side, 260 yards. On the other end, it is 661 feet deep, 220 yards, also known as the Tiger Woods Southern uh, shot. This very building that we're meeting in tonight is only one more story than the proposed development, and this building can be seen in a significant distance. Now, I've asked the commission, now I ask the commission to imagine seven of these very buildings out your, on a par three distance, out your very own back door. Our concerns are real as to the impact of multifamily heavy density rental housing will play on our homeowner neighborhood. We all share the same concerns regarding traffic, crime, property values, and the increase in road noise has on our R3 subdivision with this proposed development. I can assure you that seated behind me are some neighbors that are adamantly opposed to the nature of this development, 300 units of multifamily housing so close to our more rural subdivision. Of the proposed development, only a portion of the project is currently plotted. The concerns that our neighbors have are amplified with the northern portion of the 55 acres. This was seen earlier. The 55 acres uh, being considered for R10 zoning and the eastern 8.57 acres with the River Chase subdivision being right here. The 8.57 acres being considered for GC rezoning along Valdell Road. With this in mind, the yet to be developed 20 acres of YMCA property is currently zoned as rural. So I ask the commission, why would a non-contiguous parcel be considered for GC tonight? Additionally, with the 55 acres being considered for R10 rezoning, why would the commission jump to approve this instead of a more moderate approach of R3 to reflect the development's neighbors? Those neighbors include Barkwood Village, Moody Housing Complex, and River Shade Subdivision. Um, this will be considered smart development. As my time is running out, I'll leave you with the following request. 
that the remaining 55 acres of the proposed rezoning area is not approved as R10, but as R3. That the 8.57 acres along Valdell Road is not rezoned in commercial at this time. That the entire parcel, apartments, and the additional 55 acres must enter, exit the Camelot Crossing, no Valdell Road access. Uh, that Valdell Road improvements are made when that land is taken, that it come from the undeveloped side of Valdell Road. That way that our neighborhood is not being encroached on. We have buffalo trees. That land is not used on Valdell Road on the west side. But when the road is wide, it comes from that side of the parcel instead of our side to keep our properties intact. Uh, that the pros apartment development and soon to follow 55 acres have instead been placed in the fence around the property to prevent foot traffic into our neighborhood. I guarantee that if the developer is unable to complete the project as described, that the next developer must follow the same described luxury apartment style with similar rental amounts of rent. Request that the commissioners not approve any additional development requests along the Valdale Corridor until Valdale Road improvements are made. Currently estimated around 2025 or 2026. I say that because only 20% of the properties have even scratched the surface of approval. These pictures were taken this morning, right at River Chase Drive. The traffic is backed up, bumper to bumper. This is what we deal with every single day. So we ask that you consider these things when you're going forward with future developments. Is that until that road is wide, why not begin smart development? Slow, put the brakes on up in that area. A reduction in speed limit from North Foss Road to the Moody Housing Area. That will help protect us as we go to exit our neighborhood. And either a caution or a full traffic light be installed for the chase down the road. Thank you for your time and consideration. Any questions for the speaker? Yeah, I don't want my mic. Oh, go ahead. Okay. All right. Is there anyone in the audience now that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Here on behalf of the applicant, uh, Charlie Ann and Bill. Um, as the planner pointed out, this is a 150 acre, approximately 150 acre uh, track that straddles Valley Hill Road and Camelot Crossing. Um, truly a mixture of, of zoning classification we're asking for here. Plan development for the whole family, the R10, single family, and commercial channel. Um, I think it's important to point out that you know, this property has been in the activity center character area. And you look at the development strategy and the comprehensive plan, and I'd just like to read to you the first two sentences. And each community activity center should include a relatively high density mix of retail office services and employment to serve in a regional market area. Residential development should reinforce the town center to look at higher density housing options adjacent to the town center. Targeted to a broad range of income levels, including multifamily, townhomes, apartments, and condo. So, if you see you know, what the applicant is trying to do here, it's squarely in the back. That's all it is. Um, it's a development strategy for promoting higher density, mixture of uses, retail, office, housing options. So, the mixed use development. This proposed is squarely within a comprehensive plan. And it's not only what's allowed on this property, but it's what's envisioned for this area on Lyons County. So I'd, I'd like to leave you with that. We ask that you approve the visa. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have um, about the project or anything else. Any questions for Mr. Knight? Um, yes, sir. <clears throat> They will dictate what is required in the way of traffic should this pass. So, and I go back to some of the concerns from Mr. Bisher that, you know, as far as the right-of-way acquisition for, you know, for, for future experience.
expansion, the traffic light at River Chase. I mean, those are things that are outside of our control that, that we rely on the Georgia DOT to advise us on. So, I mean, I just want to make sure that, that everybody understands that these are things that we're not, you know, that, that's in the Department of Transportation's hands to, to determine what, what will be required for that. And whatever expenses um, should this pass, whatever expenses are related to those, you know, to those improvements. They'll be on that from the developer. Yeah, Marcy, I'm glad you brought that up. The developer is, is well aware of the traffic study, and for the record, that he is uh, fine you know, absorbing that cost of the traffic study and any improvements that may have to come out of that as a result of this is, is there any place in particular that is, is stated that we, I guess, on this document that he would have to do that, or just it's, it's going to be? Yes, at Camelot Crossing and North Alabama. I understand that. I'm just saying in regards to the GDOT aspect, I know I asked earlier, was it going to be required or is it going to be a condition or, or what have you? Or is it just going to be something stated on the contract that you all have with them? Or? I, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but it may be a requirement. Yeah. Yeah. May, I may ask Mr. McLeod, he, our director of engineering, he will be able to answer that. That is correct. It'll be a requirement coming with the permitting and during plan review and then construction plans. Uh, before any of that is approved uh, to move forward, we'll have that uh, traffic analysis impact from the DOT and from the traffic engineer, whoever does that, uh, for the development. Thanks. Uh, Mr. McLeod, I mean, that could mean, I mean, we don't know what they're gonna say. That, that, they could very likely say, we've got King's Way that goes out to 41, we've got Boulevard, as I call it, that goes out to North Valdosta Road. There's been talk about exit on the Vildale. I mean, if the, the DOT is going to look at all of that data, all of it in its entirety, and say this is the best way to distribute traffic from this particular development, correct? You are correct. They will uh, research the entire area as well as the future growth uh, of this development based on what is presented, as well as uh, any future connection to this, whatever that may be. And there are several different warrants they look at to, uh, during the traffic analysis impact. And as long as any one item makes a warrant, then that's when to come back with a recommendation. This is different and separate from the improvements that we already have in the works for Vidal and North Dodge Road. That, that is correct. This has no bearing on that. Those are, we will proceed regardless of the outcome here tonight or the outcome of the DOT study, right? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Knight. Okay. I'll close the public hearing portion of the meeting, and commissioners, I'll turn it back over to you now for your consideration. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to approve the rezoning request. Okay. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the motion carries.